Now that I know the ending, I to, to clarify about the Butch and Sandman type ending, um, I think what I was, I think the, the subtext of that was that I wanted peace for Sam and Dean, you know, whether it was alive or dead. Uh, I didn't want them to be ghosts in the veil or, you know, locked up in hell or even drugged and, you know, and, and, and heaven, or not drugged, but you know what I mean? Living a, a, a fake life of all their best memories in heaven. I want to just, you know, you know, carry on my way return, there will be peace when you're done. Whatever done means, I wanted them to be done more than dead. Um, not saying whether or not they are simply done or dead in the end. I feel like, as the end currently stands, they have found a version of peace. And that makes me happy. Also, I believe in 14 years, the final episode that was written or, you know, exploding dot, uh, 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 in the head of whoever was running the show at the time, whether it was Eric or Sarah or Jeremy or Andrew and Bob, uh, I feel like the, the final episode of the season has never been what they thought it was going to be, you know, episode one of the season. Um, I know that Genevieve was supposed to be in like four episodes and she ended up getting killed by Dean, you know what I mean? So I think, I think that's one example, but I feel like it's never been, I'm, I'm very, I'm very pleased with the current ending. I'm also, it's a coin toss on whether or not that becomes the actual end, you know what I mean? So this early on, I haven't even filmed yet, so um, we still have a long way to go. Um, how, how quickly did you come to a consensus that this is the right time to end the show? It, it was a conversation, and I think it's been said, so I'll man up and admit to it. Um, it was, and it sounds arrogant, but it was Jensen and my choice, yeah. you know, decision. We were welcomed back, and I think Mark Pedowitz said that we were, and he wasn't, no, I'm trying to say, Mark Pedowitz wasn't lying when he said the show will go as long as Jared and Jensen wanted to go. And he allowed us to find out or come to our consensus. Um, it took a long time, years. Uh, you know, we've been, we've been talking about it. It's such a weird thing to say because, especially as an actor, you're like hoping for an audition to hope for the one in a hundred chance to get a call back, to hope that somebody thinks you did a decent job, to hope for a job for three days. No. <laughs> uh, We're on the now, clock, man. <laughs> We're on the clock, man. We're on the clock. <laughs> Gold here. Come on. <laughs> now you notice Nobody's I'm... gonna listen to the words. It's a record. Now you notice no, I do pick out your own set. Um, it took. It was a long, long. You know, we, we talked about it for a long time. It was a very weird transition to basically beg for a job for years and years and years to to pray to Chuck that it gets picked up for years and years and years, and then get to a place where they're now saying to you like, "Hey, you want to do some more?" I never thought I'd be given this responsibility. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. Um, it, it took a long time. It took a long time, and I think yeah. sometime, I honestly think it was sometime season 13 where Jensen and I kind of looked at each other and went like, 2 1. Yeah. I think, and I, he could correct me. Um, and there's, no, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's really weird. This is maybe a bad analogy, but I had to put down a, a dog that I've had who it was, she was going to turn 16 in March, and I had to put her down in January. It was a, it was a different situation because she was blind and deaf. Like, not, I'm not saying like, well, now Supernatural's blind and deaf and, you know, pooping itself when it sleeps. <laughs> like, that, that's, that's not the same. I felt like Supernatural is still strong, but Sadie, my girl, she was still alive. Like, she was still living. She just couldn't hold her, her faculties and she couldn't walk and she couldn't hear and she couldn't see um, but she was just, like we took her to the vet and the vet would be like she's really feeling well like she is not unhealthy you know so it was a weird it, the, and then it kind of and you know she deteriorated I'm, Supernatural is not deteriorating I guess is the difference but it came to the point of like okay I think this is the right time like I, it was a it's a weird decision and then I'm going to sell them out <laughs> when Jensen got to Vancouver two weeks ago 
I have a text message from him. He's like, man, he's been back in Vancouver. I feel like we could do two more years. And I was like, let's talk, man. Like, I, <laughs> like, uh, I certainly don't. there for you. Yeah. I, I, know, yeah. I just don't want to be, I don't want to be like Lord of the Rings that had like 15 endings. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you're like, um, I think we're, I, it's really difficult. To, it's a diff, it's really difficult. Um, but I do feel like I'm gonna get back on set and be like, why, why are we not coming back here? You know, but it took, it took a long time. It's, we we certainly talked about it ending for, for years. For we talked about ending for 14 years. Yeah. You know, whether by our hands or somebody else's hands or by happenstance or by the network getting bought out or whatever. You know, so we've been dancing with death for 14 years, much <laughs> like the Winchester Brothers, um, never knowing when it was going to be time. When Mark said that it was going to be uh, that you could dance and be the mm -hmm. ones to decide, you know, it'll go as long as you want to go. Was that a blessing or a curse? Both. Yeah. Both. That's, a, that's a lot here for you, I imagine. It almost, I mean, he meant it. Pedowitz, for those who haven't met him, is a phenomenal man. Yeah. Great guy, great family man, uh, you know, brilliant businessman. Um, and kind and honest, and the things that he's said that he was going to do, or so, like he, it's he's been, you know, you, you work for people that don't necessarily stick by what they say. Uh, they say it just so, sort of like you know, win one for the Gipper kind of situation. He he meant it. Um, I guess it was more of a blessing, though it certainly was difficult, right. you know, to have that responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't just like, Jens, you know, Jens and I made the decision together, and then we talked with Mark and Peter and Bob. And like, it wasn't like we showed up and I'm like, peace, we're out. You know? <laughs> so it became, it was more involved in that. Yeah, Would you ever do a series? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. We'll see if there's something. I've been fortunate enough to work for 20 years, as you know. You know, we've been known each other for a long time now. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see if, if there's a story that comes across my desk that I feel really passionate about. Um, I guess I'll have a talk with my real boss, Genevieve, <laughs> and uh, my three loudest employees, Tom, <laughs> Chef, and Odette, and uh, or <laughs> uh, dependents. Um, it, it, it's gonna. It, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not. I'm not looking. I'm not. Gain, I'm looking for gainful employment by any means. Um, it'd be hard to top. It'd be. It'd be impossible to top this. I'll never have this again. No doubt. If there is a story that I'm lucky enough to audition for or take a meeting for that I really believe in, then I'll work. I'll, I'll do it again. Well, you've um, said you might want to produce. Yeah. You've said you might want to retire. You yeah. said you'd look for movies. I mean, it's been. Do you yeah. know anything closer to? I don't know anything about anything. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. I would love, honestly, I, if I didn't have a mortgage, I would love to never be in front of a camera again. <laughs> you know? um, but that having been said, I, I do love telling stories. I love storytelling, and I love learning. I love what I selfishly I love what I get to learn in the process of storytelling. Um, it's made me, I think, a better person, father, husband, friend, son, brother, um, driver. Uh, <laughs> so, though I still have work to do there, probably. Um, I, I hope I. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to toe the line between. I don't want to sound ungrateful. Like I'm so. On stage, I couldn't help but tear up and think like I'm the most lucky dude on the planet. You know, like met my wife and had some healthy, beautiful kids, and was able to buy a house and able to buy clothes that I, you know, like this gave me my dearest friends. Um, so I don't want to be, I don't want to sound like I'm not outrageously grateful for that. I just, I'd like to meet my wife and kids, you know? And I don't know if I can do that nine months a year in Vancouver. Um, and they probably don't want to meet me. Like, wait, why are you here? Why are you here so much? You, when do you go back to, hey daddy, when do you go back to work? Uh, so we'll see. If it's, if, it, if, if something, if I get an opportunity that I believe in, then um, yeah, I'd love to try and be a part of it. Jensen mentioned that last night um, you guys talked quite a bit about, you know, this is uh -huh. your last holiday situation. Uh -huh. Going up there, being on the stage and now being off the stage, was that more nerving, nerve-wracking than usual? Do you feel a sense of relief now? Like, I walked on stage like, there's a weird feeling when 7,000 people start clapping for you before you come out of a curtain. 
and honestly, it's intoxicating. You're like, I'm badass. <laughs> you know, like it's just impossible to not have an endorphin rush of like, Jesus, I'm even cooler than I thought I was, and I think I'm pretty cool. Uh, just kidding, just kidding. Um, but then it kind of, I kind of have, I kind of started having like out of body experiences when I started remembering like, man, this is it. Like I kind of wanted to sit out there with my phone and just film like my perspective. You know, I almost did. And then uh, Spate and Benedict were like, hey, we're going to bring you and Jensen out together because it's you guys. And I was like, you should. So I wasn't going to walk out holding a phone. If it was just me, I would have been like, hey, this is what it's, you know. But walking out with my brother, you know, um, I'm not going to be holding the phone. Uh, I'll have it here forever. Um, it was a really humbling experience. And it became, like, terrifyingly emotional. And Misha and Jensen were all like, no crying, no crying now. Like, no crying. Like, fuck, we're not going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's dirt, it's dirt, it's dirt. Um, yeah, you couldn't help but get emotional. Just the feeling of gratitude. Like, who's this lucky dude? Um, real, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. I was going to say real quick before they shut us off. As the show went on 15 years, went on so long, did it become harder or easier to sustain it to keep the engine going? Interesting. It, it became, we became more efficient at it. Um, I, I suppose... I suppose easier because we just, I mean, logistically, we were better at learning lines. We knew our characters really well. Um, we were able to fight for different storylines that were already established. You know, the, the, the growing pains in the beginning are real. Like, you know, in episode three of this series, you could say, uh, what was the demon thing? To find, uh, uh, you had to say a word, and you could find it, like on, in Phantom Travel on the airplane, Christo. Like, and then, you know, you spend eight days making it, and you Christo, and find out who's a demon or who's not a demon. And then they do all the visual effects, special effects, all the editing, we do all the, um, the uh, voiceover for it. And then it airs, and go like, uh, that's kind of a cheat code. We probably shouldn't have that in the rest of the series. You know, it's like the growing planes were legit um, and so as it went on it became such a family down south uh, in the writers room and producers also, and up north uh, on the ground that it became like second nature you know and I, I think it, it's it's not and some people like they think tune out and stop caring so much that's not why Jensen and I do the show like, with, with some actors you, you can't really blame them I suppose um, but we were always so passionate about the story and these characters that we get to uh, portray that we never they, there's a saying called phoning it in you know so we never felt like ah, I'm just going to phone this one in it was a more like how can we make this fucking cool which was from the, the get so I feel like it became easier Money. you guys would make a point to work together again because you both you work together so well yeah I'd love to I'd love to I mean 100% looking to do it I mean are you are you, are you guys talking about it now even not just yet I think we we still you know if this is if this is the final game of the semifinals we're not talking about who we're going to play in the finals just yet you know um, we still have you know, this is the this is five minutes to go in the World Cup final, and we're tied. You know, so we're not talking about overtime or the shootout just yet. We, it's a we did talk about it last night that like whatever is or isn't next. I mean, if he calls me and says like, hey, I'm producing this or directing this, and I need a dude with a big forehead, I'll be like, when and where, man? Like, pay me what you can and tell me what flight I'm on. Like, where do I go? Um, and vice versa. So, um, anytime. As a, whether he's a director or an actor and whether he wants me to help produce it or direct it or cast it, I feel like I'd be in, I feel like I'd, I honestly feel like my, I'd be best out of everything in the business and casting. And maybe that's as a producer casting. But I feel like, like when Leslie Odom was on the show, you know, you're like, they're going to act when Sterling was like, that guy's going places. You know, we've had people, even Alden, who didn't have lines. Um, and Wendigo, we were like, I was like, dude's good. He's smart. You know, and sure enough, um, I feel like I'm a better, I feel like I'm better at recognizing talent than I than being like the guy with the talent kind of thing. Um, so even if, in whatever capacity he wants me to come work with him, absolutely. And vice versa. Uh, I haven't really thought about it yet, just because we still got a, I mean, we still got a steep hill to climb. 
so we're kind of focusing on the task at hand. What would you like people to remember about Sam, about Jared, and about the show? Um, I think that answer is all the same. Just wrap it up. Uh, that, pardon my French, you can fuck up and still be good. You can fuck up and keep going. You know, like, pain is mandatory, suffering is optional. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to have setbacks. Try and keep going. Always keep fighting. You know, the idea of no, no matter what you're up against, like, keep on, like, do what you can to keep on going. It's, it's difficult, you know? Whether you're, you, know, you have beautiful, wealthy people who commit suicide, and you have people who aren't as fortunate, who are the happiest on the planet, like, what, I, for me, it's working towards that mindset of, like, you know what, I'm going to try and do the best I can, be loyal and grateful for what I have and those around me, and try and keep one foot in front of the other. Um, and I feel like that about, I hope that's what Sam means to people, I hope it's what Jared means to people, I hope it's what Scrantle ends up meeting people. We'll see, we have 20 more episodes, so we'll do our damnedest. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Very much. Thank you guys.